into first class roads. However, one could not help but notice the dangerous and poor condition of roads that link directly to the farms. In Ghana, cocoa is grown on farms as compared to plantations in other cocoa growing areas. The farmer owns the land and employs laborers to take care of the land. These laborers are paid from the proceeds of each year's harvest. They are also given portions of the land to farm on and live on by the landlord. There are two main cocoa harvest seasons in Ghana. The major crop harvest is from October to April and the light crop harvest is from May to July. The month of September is spent refumigating the farms. Our first visit to a cocoa farm was the farms of the National Chief Farmer for Cocoa Coffee and Share in Ghana, Nana Yadom Bwachi Kukuko II, who is also the chief of Sefri Ahim in the western region of Ghana. How long have you been into Since, 60, since 1965, there have been numerous changes. In every sphere, there's up and down. Uh, there was some time when the then government was not paying a hit to the farmers, another in the form of uh, pricing and all that. But for the years now, we are enjoying a better service. Mm. So the prices are good? The price, we bargain with the government, we bargain with Cocoa Board, we take the well price into consideration, after so many deductions, okay, the farmers are equally good with our 70% or 71% share given to the farmers. Apart from good prices, what other help is Cocoa Board giving you? Cocoa Board has been giving us so many incentives. They, they, they have brought in the high tech. That high tech, if you are, go by the rule, you get more than double harvesting. We get uh, assistance in the form of uh, subsidized insecticides, like uh, confidor or whatnot. Mm. So you are saying that the seedlings that you are using to plant the cocoa now is much better than the seedlings that you used to use 45 years ago? Uh, the seedlings we are using now is called hybrid. In, in the local language, it's Akwadejesu. Uh, so it's for 16, I, I, I've been plucking two years, you, you get yield. But before, how many years did you have? Before to it takes a farmer nine years to get yield. We know the international community is talking about child labor, child labor. They're saying that farmers in cocoa producing countries are using young children, paying them peanuts, preventing them from going to school to do the work on the farm. Is maybe, this true? Maybe it's a history. Because this time, no farmer will even allow his ward to follow him to the beach, to the farm. And uh, the, the civilization has, has existed in a way that even you feel ashamed for not educating your child. Mm. Today, in 2007, is much better off financially than 45 years ago. Yes, 100% correct. Because uh, being a farmer now, you can, it's a boastful thing. Yeah. I, can, I can say uh, I'm not regretted for being a farmer, for being a cuckoo farmer. I'm not regretted at all. I have about six caretakers. Caretakers, okay. They are not laborers, they are caretakers. Okay. I know, Sefri, your zoo is a very a uh, popular area for cocoa, yeah. especially in Ghana. Mm -hmm. What sort of development has the government in return to you keeping up with the high production? Uh, the current government is helping the farmers in the way of roots, educating our children, giving them scholarships, farmers work. Koko, especially cocoa farmers work, are giving free scholarship. Uh, if our goods are not passable, the government is trying to make it no at all. He's giving us some subsidized goods 
Well, it's, it's an incentive. Mm. Mm. So what makes Ghana's cocoa premium cocoa? What is the premium cocoa is due, uh, is due to the well fermented and then well dried and then well picking the the the, 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 the they are picking something. They are picking the mo the, the the bad ones. We call it molded beans. The, those are the molded beans. The, one that the molded beans, yeah. Okay. And then they are picking the. This time you call it purple beans. Okay. You, tr you, uh. you pick them out so that the what will remain may be called grade one. And that grade one may fetch the government the, the needed premium. So the premium actually is being dictated by the farmers themselves. And through education, the farmers are now aware of how to, 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 uh, to help the government to achieve the, the necessary premium. From Nanabuachi's farms in Sevioso, we visited the cocoa farms of Madame Abina Mabwa, the best national cocoa farmer in 2003. At Madame Mabwa's farms in Sankori in the Ashanti region, we were taken round part of a farm by Mr. Mohamed Al Hassan, the principal quality control officer for Cocoa Board in the Sankori district. At her farms, we were shown facilities she had provided for her laborers, which included clean drinking water and residential quarters. Ghana cocoa beans superior quality is gained through the way it's processed during the harvesting period. In the drying process, the farmers use sun rays instead of mechanical means as used by other cocoa producing countries. The cocoa pod is cracked open and the seeds removed. The placenta is separated from the beans and left for fermentation on bamboo mats. The beans are covered with palm leaves. After fermentation, the beans are turned round and left to dry in the open sun. license-buying uh, companies. These are all private license-buying companies, um, about 18 or 19 in number, and they go throughout the country and look for cocoa to buy. They would normally have certain tools of trade, you know, like scales and sieves and personnel and vehicles in the field, and they go take the cocoa from the uh, uh, farmers and ready them for our quality control division, you know, to assess, you know, the cocoa, grade the cocoa, and seal uh, the cocoa. Once quality uh, control has finished uh, their work, then uh, we have um, the private hauliers moving the cocoa from up country uh, to the ports or to our three takeover centers in Takrade, Tema, and Kumasi. So um, the private hauliers are the ones who bring this to our three uh, takeover uh, centers. At the takeover center, of course, the quality control division also checks to ensure that the cocoa which they had graded and sealed up country is the same cocoa which we are ready to offer uh, for export. So we keep these in the warehouses and the um, cocoa marketing company, which has responsibility for marketing cocoa, um, um, comes uh, to take this cocoa, and they, they go, that's what we mean by taking over. At the takeover centers, they have responsibility for taking the cocoa and readying them for export. CMC works with Cocoa Board to raise finance on the international market to finance the entire cocoa purchase and subsidiary operations during the harvesting season in Ghana. By this, Cocoa Board arranges for a trade finance facility based on forward sale contract arranged by CMC. We spoke to Mr. William Mensah, Deputy Chief Executive, Administration and Finance at Cocoa Board to tell us about the procedure for raising such facilities. The basic operations of Cocoa Board is to buy and sell cocoa. So we source for funds for the buying. We collect all the proceeds 
and then we distribute to the users of those funds. Funds are made available to Cocoa Board. Cocoa Board in turn buys Cocoa. Previously, it was directly because we, are, we had a unit that was buying Cocoa, produce buying company that was buying Cocoa. So the money is given to produce buying company. They go to the farmer and buy the Cocoa. And then we move from that unitary purchases to uh, a system where we have so many licensed buyers, maybe about 18 active licensed buyers buying cocoa. What cocoa board does again is that uh, <clears throat> from from moving from Bank of Ghana, what we went on is to went to the international markets, build on our own merit as a corporate entity uh, from a syndicate of banks, and this. We thought this was better because of the cost. If you remember, uh, we have gone through a series where cocoa bills or the discounting charges was about up to a point of 42%. So we raised 100 CDs. We paid as a cost 42 CDs. And that was very expensive for cocoa board. So when we floated the idea of borrowing foreign or using a syndicate of banks, I think management accepted, especially when you do the cost benefit analysis. And that's what we have been doing since uh, 92, 93. It's, it's, it's yes. So that is, that is exactly what we do in terms of fund raising financing. And when the funds are raised, as I said, we have about 18 LBCs that are active, we disperse this money to the LBCs on the back of a bank guarantee. So he brings a bank guarantee, we release the money to him, he buys the cocoa, he refunds, or we recover the seed funds that we have given him at a small interest, basically about one, 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 one B, uh, one percentage point below the Bank of Ghana base rate. So the Bank of Ghana base rate is 14.5, we charge 13.5. That's that is basically what is done in terms of the funding and raising financing for Cocoa. To help us understand the functions of CMC Ghana, we met with the managing director Mr. Dramani Igala at his office in Accra. Cocoa Marketing Company is a subsidiary of Cocoa Marketing Board. Uh, at its inception in 1961. Basically, it was uh, designed to sell Ghana cocoa beans and cocoa products. But over the years, there's been some additional function, which is the internal marketing, which involves the takeover of cocoa at three takeover centers. That's Tema Port, Takradi Port, and Kase. Now, so our functions have increased in terms, in terms of what we have at the moment. We have the external marketing and internal marketing. So the function of the MD is to coordinate all these functions and ensure that there's a smooth running of the company. Yeah. I mean, traditionally, we know about the external marketing. Yeah. What is the internal marketing? The marketing? Yes, uh, sometime in 1992, uh, the World Bank decided that they should liberalize internal marketing. At that time, uh, produce buying division was the main wing of Cocoa Board. Now they have about 23 companies that buy cocoa from the farmers. Uh, in the same vein, they said, look, CMC should also, as the external marketing wing, take over some of the functions. You know, they take over the cocoa from the LBCs, prepare it for shipment. By that I mean they do the shipping documents, they warehouse the cocoa, and then after the sale, we ship the cocoa. But the QCD also ensures in this chain that the quality aspect is taken care of. So we play a very important role in the chain because after the LBCs have delivered to us, the cocoa is in our custody and we have to ensure that it is sent out as a program by our sales uh, uh, delivery periods. So who negotiates the price on the outside market? Yes, uh, I will take you back. In 1961, when the First Republic decided to celebrate, it was then called the uh, UK Cocoa Marketing Company, but was transferred here. It was set up in UK and transferred here solely, as I said, to market cocoa. So we have the trading room. The trading room means that there are a group of traders who are trained to market Ghana cocoa. Currently, as I speak, we are talking about maybe five of us who are in the trading room who sell Ghana cocoa. But the idea was that 
the marketing of cocoa should be in the hands of Ghanaians. And over the years, we've recruited Ghanaians who are handling the, the sale of Ghana cocoa beans. And I think we can say we are the only country in the world that has pursued that policy. And that policy is what we are all beneficiaries of. Still looking at the work of CMC in the cocoa industry in Ghana, we visited the warehousing facilities at the Tema port in the Greater Accra region and the Takradi port in the Western region. In both warehouses, we were taken round by the respective port managers. At Tema, we were taken round on a tour of the warehouse by Mr. Aditari, the port manager for CMC Warehouse. This one is a seal. It is provided a put on the bag after the quality control officer or personnel has taken samples from the bag and then determined the grade of the cocoa and the category of the cocoa. So with this seal, the grader who did the job, his number is on it. Okay. The grader's number is on it. And then there's a seal number. Every month we change the seals. So every month has its number. So if this cocoa even goes overseas and the cook, there's a problem with it, you can always trace and to the original person who graded the cocoa by this seal. If you take the seal, you will get the greatest number. So you will be able to locate where the cocoa came from. And on the, the other markings, you have districts and societies, which came from, and then the LBCs who bought it. So all those things, you can get it from the bag. At the port, when the beans arrive, they are checked in by the representatives from various units of Cocoa Board and CMC, including quality control units. Samples are taken from the cocoa bags and sent for further quality checks and grading. The government, over the years, has put processing high on its agenda. To do this, the government is offering special concession to private business owners to encourage them to invest in the processing industry. On processing, the chief executive officer of Cocoa Board had this to say. The main thing Cocoa Board uh, can do is one, 